Hi, my name is Christina Fuss. I am the Section Chief of Cardiothoracic Imaging, and we will be discussing non-small cell lung cancer. Non-small cell lung cancers are a group of cancers that are made of adenocarcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, and large cell carcinoma. 80% of lung cancers are non-small cell lung cancers, out of which roughly 50% are adenocarcinoma. Smoking poses a major risk factor, with relative risks increasing to 2.4 after 30 to 40 years and up to 5 after 40 years of smoking. However, it is also the most common cancer in non-smokers and in women. Adenocarcinomas usually depicted a speculated pulmonary nodule, often with hilar and mediastinal adenopathy. They have an upper lobe peripheral predilection, are commonly solid, but can be subsolid with the potential for air bronchogram. They are, for the most part, associated with a smoking history, but other environmental exposures such as asbestos, radon, and particularly passive smoking also cause an increased risk. This is a patient with known right upper lobe lung cancer. Notice the volume loss within the right hemithorax, the tenting of the right hemidiaphragm, and the loss of the right superior mediastinal contour. Also notice the inverted S-shaped contour of the inferior aspect of the upper lobe opacity, which is commonly described as the S-sign of golden, a characteristic appearance of a right upper lobe lung cancer with resulting right upper lobe collapse. When thinking about pulmonary nodules in the context of adenocarcinoma, size is a very important predictor of malignancy. Lung nodules up to 7 mm in size only bear a risk of 1% to be malignant. However, if that same nodule reaches a size of 20 mm, malignancy is likely in 3 out of 4 cases. Air bronchograms are more commonly associated with minimal invasive adenocarcinomas and adenocarcinomas, and I will address this later. They often have speculated margins, as I mentioned before. This is a patient who presented with recurrent pneumonias. His first presentation to the emergency room was in 2011. A left upper lobe ground glass opacity was described, and despite the fact that he had classic symptoms of pneumonia, a CT was, and a CT was obtained. However, the patient was sent home with antibiotics and reassurance that this should have been a pneumonia. Five years later, he pre-presented with similar symptoms, and lo and behold, the left upper lobe opacity had increased in conspicuity, in density, and had further increased in speculated margins. Here's the initial CT. We can see a left upper lobe mass, predominantly ground glass, with irregular shaped margins. In 2016, that very same mass had become much more dense. The margins have become much more nodular and lobular, and this was, in fact, an invasive adenocarcinoma. This patient did not have a uh, radiograph initially and presented with recurrent infections. She had multiple similar appearing lesions in the right lung, which were cavitary with an irregular shaped border, but there were also surrounding tree and bud opacities and linear opacities as seen in the lung window in the top right corner. The patient was biopsied, and the biopsy only revealed necrotic tissue. A bronchoalveolar lavage, however, showed malignant cells consistent with adenocarcinoma, which was presumably moderately differentiated. She underwent resection of that presumed adenocarcinoma, and on the resection specimen, no carcinoma was noted. However, she had an infection with non-tuberculous mycobacteria. What is important to remember about this case? Multiple cavitary pulmonary nodules in one lobe are highly unlikely to be adenocarcinoma because adenocarcinoma for once does not tend to cavitate and multiple nodules just don't seem to fit the picture. 
This is a case of a 75-year-old gentleman who presented with cough, fever, and malaise to an outside hospital. A two-view radiograph was obtained, and you can see this opacity in the right middle lobe. He then underwent CT, which I don't have, and was told that he had a right middle lobe lung cancer and that he, he should get his affairs in order. Fortunately, the gentleman was non-English speaking only and did not understand what he was told and left the emergency room AMA. Five months later, he switched his PCP and finally he found a PCP. He spoke his native language and the PCP explained to him that we should look for that lung mass that was seen five months ago. And lo and behold, on the current radiograph, that lung mass was gone. The patient simply had a pneumonia. Unfortunately, he was not threatened and scared to death when he was told that he had lung cancer. So it is important to recognize that it is not always really cancer, but it is cancer often. So it is important to obtain priors if they are available. Pneumonia can be mass-like. Clinical history with B symptoms or recurrent or current illnesses are very important to obtain. Staging for lung cancer can be done with multiple diagnostic tools. Often, tissue sampling is obtained both of the primary mass and lymph nodes if they are involved. And advanced imaging with PET-CT and MRI of the brain concludes the, image, concludes the staging. The therapy rests on these three pillars, chemotherapy, surgery, and radiation therapy, and is applied according to the patient's staging. Another case here, a 69-year-old female who presented to our institution with shortness of breath. She has a long-term smoking history. You can see an almost complete opacification of the left upper lobe, as seen on the lateral radiograph, but it is not collapsing, as is, in fact, with bulging fissures, meaning the fissure is bulging outward, which tells us that there's a space-occupying process ongoing. The patient was not febrile and did not have a white kind at time of presentation. This was, in fact, a large left upper lobe lung cancer with associated adenopathy. As you can see on the lateral radiograph, the density surrounding the left main bronchus. How is non-small cell lung cancer staging done? The stages range from occult disease to stage 4. The patient on the right had a large mass which was cavitary and contained an air fluid level in his right lower lung. This is a typical presentation of a squamous cell carcinoma. These tend to often necrotize centrally and form an air fluid level due to the debris within the tumor. Our next case is a 67-year-old female who presented with cough. Cough, as you can see, is often the leading diagnosis and presentation. She had a hazy opacity in the right upper lung on the frontal radiograph, which again obscured the visualization of the right superior mediastinum. On the lateral radiograph, you could see the hyperinflation of the right middle and right lower lobe, and the effacement of the right upper lobe that is displaced anteriorly. This is again the typical appearance of a right upper lobe collapse with hyperinflation of the right and middle lobe, which is compensatory. Looking at the diseases, occult disease or stage zero are pretty much cancer that is either not identified or adenocarcinoma in situ, which is tumor that is solely limited to the airways. Stage one through three A is fairly busy, and I don't want to bore you with details. Just note that these are stages that can be treated with a curative intent. 3B or higher are stages that are usually not treated with surgery, but with radiation and chemotherapy in combination. Inoperable 3B and up contain any tumor size and nodular involvement of N2 or N3 diseases with potential metastatic lesions. So. The term bronchoalveolar carcinoma is no longer used, and I would like for you to eradicate that term from your memory. Adenocarcinoma is now divided into AAH, 
atypical adenomatoid hyperplasia, which are tumors that are smaller than 0.5 centimeter and solely comprised of ground glass. Adenocarcinomas in situ are tumors that are smaller than 3 centimeter, purely ground glass, and can be both mucinous and non mucinous. Minimal invasive adenocarcinomas have a ground glass periphery that is not larger than 3 centimeter with a solid component that is smaller than 5 millimeter. And then lastly, invasive adenocarcinomas. This is a 60 year old female with smoking history, weight loss, and malaise. And you can see this opacity obscuring the right lateral chest wall and on the lateral radiograph, um, the dense mass within the right posterior upper lobe. I showed you the squamous cell lung cancer on a prior slide. Again, this is a large central mass with postoperative sequela. Often there is lymph adenopathy and early widespread metastatic disease. One of these patients has a squamous cell carcinoma, one of them has abscesses. How do we differentiate them? Squamous cell lung cancers tend to have irregular walls, mass-like margins, and often local regional and distant adenopathy at time of presentation. Abscesses tend to have a smooth wall, often no mural nodularity, and only reactive regional adenopathy. Our last case is a patient of 48-year-old never smoker with bronchorrhea and cough. And you can see extensive bilateral ground glass opacities in both lungs. This is a patient who had mucinous adenocarcinoma. These patients often present with bronchorrhea, crazy paving with bulgy fissures, and these cancers are highly avid on positron emission tomography, and they're not generally associated with smoking. His follow-up during chemotherapy, which was targeted because the patient had an underlying genetic mutation, showed the cancer vanishing with the underlying lung parenchyma preserved. In conclusion, in the assessment of adenocarcinomas, prior studies are critical. The tumor size and location determines the diagnostic approach. 3B or not 3B is the question in determining whether a tumor is surgically resectable or not. And subsolid nodules may not all be cancer, but some of them certainly are. Thank you very much.